Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a first look at Manjaro 20.02 GNOME version. Um, I'm actually a pretty big fan of GNOME, of, um, not of GNOME, we all know that's not true. Um, but I'm a pretty big fan of Manjaro, I just haven't used it for quite a while. But today we're going to be looking at it in a virtual machine, so let's just go ahead and uh, take a look and see what this looks like. So when you first boot up the live session, this is what you get. So we're going to go ahead and install this here and see how it works. I'm very impressed that it allowed me to go full screen right out the bat. Not all Linux distributions do that, not even close. So we'll uh, let's see American English, erase the disk with some swap. And that's going to give it like half the swap, but that's okay. Now, the last time I did Manjaro, you created a user account in Calamari's right here. Apparently, now they're doing a more of a um, post-install user creation, similar to what Elementary or Pop OS does. That's cool. It brings it more in line with like a mainstream like Windows installation, I guess. You don't create like a a, a Windows user prior to installation or anything. So it's kind of more like Windows in that way, I guess. Mac OS 2, I guess, too. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, overall, the theming looks the same as it always has. Um, let's see. See how long this takes to install. If it takes quite a while, I will uh, cut this part out. Oh, that was a big jump. I like how they put the dock visible on the screen at all times, because like in most GNOMEs, you have to press the uh, Windows key to, you know, see that. That's cool. Well, when we get it installed, we'll look and see what extensions come pre-installed, because some of them definitely do. Oh, I have the Tile Window Manager extension. That's cool. That's from Pop OS. Nice. Oh, that was a really quick install, cool too. Good. Give this re uh, reboot. May end up having to, uh, yeah. I don't know if this is booting off the correct. I'm gonna shut this down. And make sure that it's. Make sure it's doing it from the right place. Yeah. I don't know why let me eject it. Hmm. Never done that before. Hmm. I bet you it's because it's saved. Hold on a second. Oh, power off the machine. There we go. I bet you'll let me change it now. Yeah. There we go. I know there's a way to get around that change the boot order, but I'm just having, you know. <coughs> Alright. Hold on a second. I'm going to scoff. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. COVID. Hopefully not. Alright. That's very impressive. In a virtual machine that goes full screen just like that. Alright. Make sure, yep, English, US. We can turn those off. We don't need those. Uh, Detroit. Skip that. Create a username. My name is Matthew. Weber, Dr. M. Dub. Ooh, parental controls. Uh, I don't have any little kids running around as far as I know. Uh, 
Okay. Start using Mandrora Linux. That was very good. That was very quick. Well, that was a very quick install. It was less than five minutes. Use SV box SVGA to enable window resizing. Um, no thanks. We don't need to do that. That that I just dismissed. I probably should have went through that, but um. That's something new to the most recent GNOME is a little start screen that will show user new users how to navigate GNOME, which is a good thing, I guess. Uh, the little start screen here, this is the start screen that has been here for ages and ages on Manjaro. Um, basic links to documentation, the wiki, forums, to discover for software. Probably, this is probably links to the software center. No, interesting. That takes you to what on earth is that? That's weird. So what are these? Hmm. I didn't even know Manjaro had their own Discover Applications website. Go away. Again, go away. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we can get rid of that. That's for the most part get involved. Donate, you know, layouts manager. Huh. Okay, that is cool. Let's look at. All right, that is really interesting. I've never seen that before. Wow, that's really that's really nice. That reminds me a little bit of Mate. In in Mate, they have different uh, versions that you can use for their window manager uh, that lets you do things like uh, one that looks like Windows, one that looks like Mac OS, classic GNOME two, and things like that. that that's kind of like this. Uh, that's really really cool. Um, and this is the standard GNOME one. That's gonna um, hide the. Um, dock off screen that's really neat and this is tiling when match I wonder if there's a like a alt super um, terminal Let's see what the tile oh, that's what the tiling looks like cool that is cool um, is NeoFetch installed now? So let's install some new. And all right, so this is running uh, ZSH out of the box. Very interesting. So this doesn't come with Bash out of the box. That's nice. Um, running the window manager mutter, which is standard for GNOME. Um, 1100 packages out of the box. And, uh, probably 1163 packages because they just installed uh, NeoFetch using kernel version 5.9.11, which is basically uh, the most recent. I think 5.10 just came out or is just about to come out. Um, using the Matcha Dark C Window Manager theme, the Matcha C Gnome 2 or 3 theme, and the Papyrus Dark Maya icon pack. Um, and let's see here. Frida M. I think that's it. Oops. Mm, I can never remember this. Other Linux YouTube reviewers would know this. Yeah, yeah all right. Anyways, using about mm, about 900 megabytes out of the box. Well, I mean, almost out of the box. We do have some things running here. Um, so that's not bad for GNOME because usually it's well over a gigabyte. All right, let's... Uh, So the question is, how do you get back to that layouts manager? Because I want to go back to this. Apply. All right. Settings. That's here. Gnome 2. 
Oh man, it comes with GNOME Twix pre-installed. This is the preeminent version of GNOME, people. GNOME, I've been preaching for years that GNOME Twix needs to be installed out of the box. Because you can't do anything with GNOME without GNOME Twix. You can't change the theme. Let's see what themes come, come together. Ooh, they got some different of the matchas. Uh, let's look at this one is. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Yeah. That one's with green. More keeping with the, what's this one? Red. Do they have a, a dark red? Yeah. Those aren't the same. Interesting. There we go. That's the favorite. Right there. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Fonts. Noto Sans and Hat. These aren't. The same. These are all different. That's really weird. Normally in a distribution, the fonts pretty much are all the same, like brand of fonts, if you will. Um, keyboard, mouse, startup applications. Nothing really crazy there. It does start up caffeine automatically, which is, I believe, up here. Or maybe here. Used, used to be that caffeine was started. When it started up, it would be. Oh, nightlight. That's what that is. I bet you. Um, all right, top bar. It does have out of the box. It has close, maximize, minimize, and uh, maximize and minimize enabled out of the box, which is good. Uh, Windows. It does have an extent. I bet you it uses the standard GNOME extensions. I bet you. Um, yeah. It uses the new GNOME Extensions app, which is awesome. The latest Ubuntu did not have this yet. So I wasn't able to check it out. So it has a application menu, arc menu installed out of the box, but not en enabled. Auto move windows. Um, I'm guessing that has something to do with the tiling. Um, I bet you if you went change to the tiling version, that gets enabled. Dash to dock, uh, dash to panel. These are all uh, extensions that are going to play a part in these layouts, I bet you. So let's uh, let's change uh, to a, a different thing here. And see, yeah, see how the dash to dock was disabled and dash to panel was, was enabled. That's cool. So this it also enables arc menu, which definitely should be the default menu system in, in GNOME because it's way better. Um, so that's very interesting. What else you got here? Um, oh, GS Connects. That's for phones. G game mode. What is game mode? Uh, okay, so it turns off notifications and sh stuff like that while you're gaming. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm not impressed with the uh, scrolling so far. Pop shell, which is going to be the tiling. Places status bar indicator. Pack Mac updates indicator. Night theme switcher. Um, native window placement material shell. That's going to be tiling as well. I bet you. I think that's what. Um, unite user themes, which is going to allow you to change the different themes on it. Uh, for the GNOME shell, not just the the Windows. Um, works. For, so this comes with a good number of of um extensions. That's I like that because with standard, like if you install on st install Fedora, you're getting no extensions at all. And if you want to install extensions, you have to go through, get this app and, and enable them and all that nonsense. And it should happen right out of the box. Um, so what else here? We got desktop icons. Weirdly, this is off, even though we have desktop icons over here. Um, System tray also says off, despite there actually being a system tray over here already. What if I turn that on? What what you get? Nothing, because it's already on. Maybe something different came up, and I was just too hasty. No. Automatic dark theme, window tiling, gesture settings. I can't really test that because I don't have a trash pa trackpad. But if that's what um uses that stuff that window that uh elementary six is going to have that could be really cool um online accounts gnome tweak tool and dynamic dynamic oh cool all right so this looks like it will allow you to change your wallpaper based on um 
like a time a day or something. And new existing. That's cool. I don't, I'll have to give that a test. Um, let's see what let's see what backgrounds they have pre-installed. Some cool. This one's kind of neat. I like I like lightning. Um, I'm not. I'm not impressed with the scrolling on this so far. I'm wondering if it has something to do with my virtual machine. Sometimes the scrolling just doesn't work. I'm guessing it has something to do with the virtual machine. It's going wonky. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that one. All right, the rest of the settings here look like they're ba just basic GNOME settings. Color. Can you change like the like in Ubuntu, you can change the appearance a little bit in the just standard settings. I wonder if you can do that here. Change between uh, light and dark mode. Probably not. So why, why would they put it here when they install GNOME tweaks out of the box? Okay. So let, let's see what all comes installed, shall we? All programs. Let's see accessories. Caffeine clocks. Is that GNOME clocks? That is GNOME clocks. Okay. Cool. I like that application quite a bit. Um, extensions, files, firmware. That's probably to change like drivers and stuff. Uh, gestures. Uh, Git hash. That's. I think that's to do. Um, what's calculate message digest and checksums. Okay. HP device managers for printer, Cavantum, layouts. So that's going to be how you get to this. That's cool. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Main menu. Add or remove programs from main menu. Manage our user guide. Maps. Compass pre-installed. Software token. Uh, I think that's going to be like a... Um, like a... What do you call it? Second factor authentication or whatever kind of thing. Uh Pre-install. That's um. I bet you that that's that's uh the GNOME text editor. What is it called? Uh, G Edit. Yep, that's it. Weird theme looking though. Well, I mean, nothing else in this thing is solarized, but this here is solarized. That's a little weird. Um, let's see here. Go to graphics. G Thumb. That's literally the only graphical application that's installed. Okay, so no GIMP. At least no GIMP so far. Firefox, Geary, Transmission, Web Apps. I wonder what Web Apps is. That's going to be something like, uh, what's it, what, what do they call it? It starts with an F Flutter, maybe, or something like that, where you can create applications out of Web Apps. That's cool. Uh, let's see here. Office, it comes with cal Calendar. Only Office desktop editors. Now, see, at one point they gave you a choice between LibreOffice and OpenOffice. They did not give us the choice this time. Uh, that's interesting. So you're just stuck with Only Office unless you want to uninstall and put um, LibreOffice on here. Because LibreOffice, frankly, is just way better. Uh, that's a little bit disappointing that they took away that choice. Programming icon browser. Um, okay. Probably any of the icons that are on the, on the system. Sound and video. So it comes with lollipop, cheese, um, videos. This is going to be like MPV, maybe? Or GNOME videos? Uh, it doesn't have an about page. Okay. Not sure what that is. I'm sure, Probably the standard uh, GNOME video application. Um, but no VLC. So if you want VLC, you'd have to install VLC. I personally just... Because VLC, VLC will actually play anything, so that's the reason why I like that. Um, system tools, let's see here. Um, Gparted, standard, I don't know what LSHW is. Hardware, Lister, I don't know what that is. I'm not going to open it to find out. Parental controls, Ra oddly it comes with Ranger pre-installed. That is weird. <laughs> now if this was a, like a tiling window manager, by all means, I love I love Ranger, but the fact that it's not that it's installed pre-installed because it also has I mean this is Nautilus, 
That's odd. That's an odd selection. Um, Clowns, discs, characters. Just, these are the standard GNOME stuff. This is going to be GNOME Terminal, GNOME Tweaks is here, and other. Uh, these are just software. It's where the software update isn't in with settings. That is a little weird. Anyway, so that's the uh, installed programs. Um, now, I don't do... Uh, install games or anything because this is a, a, a virtual machine so you're not going to play games in a virtual machine um, but overall I'm really impressed with some of the stuff that Manjaro has done with GNOME the pre-install extensions are really cool um, because it sets the user up to actually be able to use GNOME the uh, the responsiveness is kind of hard to judge in a virtual machine but so far it doesn't seem bad I mean this is a virtual machine and it's just you know Closing and opening really quickly. You know? Um, it, they pin snapshot or screenshot the screenshot taker to the task bar. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the performance seems r pretty good. I mean, Firefox op is usually the slowest thing to open ever. And that was really quick. I was really, really nice. That's very impressive. Um, I'm not sure if this is as fast as Fedora, but it's also running more extensions than Fedora, so you'd have to keep that in mind. Um, yeah. I'm not a big fan of GNOME, as everybody knows, but this is really, really very attractive. This is a GNOME that I could use uh, if I were to use GNOME. So I think that's a ringing endorsement for me. I'm really impressed with, the, like I said, the selection of extensions, the the themes that are installed, uh, the fact that it has GNOME tweaks pre-installed right out of the box is just, I mean, I'm the kind of users that can install that on my own, but from a, a, a new user perspective, that's really good because, I mean, most new users aren't going to know that it exists without having to, like, Google it. The fact that it's there is awesome. All right. So, final thoughts. I really like this. It was really good. It was a, it was a nice little first look. Um, I think as I advance my ability to review distros and stuff like that i'll probably start installing them on bare metal so that i can do some testing on uh like for games and stuff um but for now this works okay um if you, i would say if you're into if you're looking for a gnome version a gnome distro manjaro is probably the one that i would tell you to go with because it's the most customized out of the box and will allow you to go through and do your own customization so um that is it for uh, me this time. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a big fat thumbs down. Uh, I really do appreciate both of those because it shows that you interacted with the video. Um, and you're not going to hurt my feelings if you hit the thumbs down. I would probably give it a thumbs down. Uh, if you really did enjoy this video, think about subscribing because we upload new videos almost every single day. Uh, window managers, uh, podcasts, and pretty much anything you can you can think of we'll, we'll be doing a few more of these distro reviews and they'll get better as they go along because this is only my second one um and if you want to be notified make sure you hit the notification bell so we'll see you next time thanks for watching